Hello, my name is Thomas and I'm a practicing primary care paramedic from Canada. I have over one and a half years of clinical experience and I'm licensed to give intramuscular injections. I've also been self-administering cerebrolysin and cortexin on and off for over a year. In this video, I will discuss and demonstrate how I safely self-administer an intramuscular injection of cerebrolysin and cortexin. It is important to take the necessary safety precautions to avoid infection and allow these nootropics to be properly absorbed. Before we begin, I want to warn of the dangers of infection. An IM injection bypasses the body's natural infection defense barrier, potentially allowing viruses and bacteria access to vulnerable bodily tissues. Some of the consequences of improper IM injection include blood infection, also known as sepsis, and localized infection, which can develop into an abscess. An infection left untreated can lead to loss of life or limb. Now let's define some terms. Pathogens refers to bacteria and viruses. Aseptic refers to the absence of pathogens. Needle gauge refers to the diameter of the needle itself, 18 gauge being quite wide and 30 gauge being quite narrow. A needle with a lower gauge number will be able to inject liquid at a faster rate. A blunt tip needle is a needle used to drop medications from their container. The needle is typically 18 gauge in size with a blunted tip for safety. An ampule is a sealed glass container opened by snapping off the top. A medication vial is a sealed glass container with a rubber covering at the top. A blunt tip needle is penetrated through the top to access the medication. An intramuscular injection is the process of injecting a medication into a muscle via a syringe. Intravenous injection is the process of injecting a medication into a vein via a syringe. When injecting a medication, it is important to use appropriate aseptic technique, which means practices and procedures to prevent contamination from pathogens. I'm not saying you need to perform the injection inside a perfectly sterile operating theater. However, you also shouldn't be injecting inside a barn. What I'm saying is the more aseptic techniques you employ, the lower your chance of infection. It's about finding a balance between what is safe practice and what is practical for you. As with everything, the risk of adverse outcomes is never zero, despite perfect technique. Now here are the supplies I use. A 30 gauge, one inch lure lock needle. An 18 gauge, one and a half inch lure lock blunt tip needle. An alcohol swab. A 10 mil normal saline pre-filled syringe for cortexin a 10 mil syringe for cerebral lysine, and an adhesive dressing. Here are the steps I personally take to ensure the risk of infection is minimized. Clean your hands with hand sanitizer or wear medical gloves. Clean your entire work surface with a disinfectant and allow the surface to dry. Place all supplies on your clean surface and try not to let yourself or the supplies touch any unclean surfaces. Open an alcohol swab and clean the entire surface of your cerebralysin ampule and allow to dry. If you are injecting cortexin, flick the lid off and clean the top of the vial, allowing it to dry. For a cerebralysin injection, screw a blunt tip needle onto the tip of a 10 mil syringe being careful not to touch any areas that connect to each other. Take the ampule and locate the dot on the neck of the ampule. Hold the ampule with the dot facing away from you and grab the top of the ampule with an alcohol swab, snapping it off towards yourself. This should ensure a clean break along the seam. Take the cap off the needle, stick it to the base of the ampule and draw up all the liquid being careful not to touch the needle or the edges of the ampule with your fingers. Do not worry about sucking up pieces of glass, as most blunt fill needles have a built-in filter. For a cortexin injection, screw a blunt tip needle onto the tip of a 10 mil pre-filled syringe, being careful not to touch any areas that connect to each other. Take the cap off the needle and hold your pre-filled syringe vertical with the needle upright. Flick the syringe and push up all the air from the syringe. Rotate the syringe so that the needle is facing down, pushing out 7 mils of fluid so that you are left with 3 mils. And no air. Take your uncapped cortexin vial and penetrate the rubber top with the needle, injecting all the fluid into the vial. At this point the needle is pressurized, which we need to fix. 
To equalize the pressure, hold the vial vertical so that the liquid sits at the bottom. Keep the needle tip inside the vial, but make sure the tip isn't touching the fluid. Draw three mils of air back into the syringe to equalize. With the needle still inside the vial, hold both the syringe and the vial together. Rotate the vial and syringe a few times to allow the fluid to mix with the powder. Hold the vial and the syringe vertical so that the fluid rests at the lid. Pull the needle back until it is barely visible inside the vial and draw up all the fluid. At this point, you are left with a syringe containing cerebral lysin or cortexin. The next steps are the same regardless of the medication. Hold the syringe vertical with the needle upright and gently flick it until most of the bubbles dislodge and rise to the top. Push out the remaining air, being careful not to waste too much fluid. Place your blunt fill cap back onto the needle and unscrew it. Replace with a 30 gauge needle. I've found the best place to inject is the lateral upper thigh, which has the best absorption with the least amount of pain. Using a new alcohol swab, sanitize your skin using a swirling outward motion. Allow your skin to dry before injecting. Take the cap off the needle and push it swiftly into the sanitized area at a 90 degree angle in relation to the surface of the skin. You should bury about 9 tenths the length of the needle to ensure its placement in the muscle. And there's no need to aspirate prior to injecting. Use one hand to hold the syringe still and the other to firmly inject the fluid. Because you're using a relatively thin needle, it will take some time to inject all the fluid. Keep the needle still to avoid unnecessary damage. Once the fluid is injected, pull the needle out and recap it. Do not reuse the needle. Place an adhesive dressing over the injection site and throw away all glass and needles into a sharps container. Congratulations, you have safely performed an intramuscular injection. Now I'll answer a few questions which may arise. First question being, what happens if I accidentally hit a vein? If you think you may be in a vein, don't worry. Continue to inject as per instructions. Cerebral lysin and cortexin can be injected IV as well as IM. Injecting into a vein will simply cause more bleeding and result in some bruising later on. No big deal. What about a 30 gauge needle? It seems like it may be too thin. The reason I recommend a thinner needle is because it reduces pain and tissue damage. The downside is that it takes around 45 seconds to inject 5 mils of fluid. You can use a larger gauge, but I would recommend you avoid injecting in the exact same location repeatedly. Are there any other locations that you may inject? Well, understand that while any muscle can be injected, some muscles are preferable compared to others. I've demonstrated a lateral thigh injection, but you can also inject in the gluteus maximus muscle, as well as the deltoid muscle. I don't recommend injecting in the pectoral muscle due to the risk of penetrating into the lung cavity. Injecting into the trapezius muscle is also not recommended due to the risk of puncturing nearby veins and arteries. Lastly, what if the needle hits bone? The surface layer of bone does not have any pain receptors. Unless you generate enough force to penetrate past the surface of the bone, you likely won't feel it touch. If you feel like you hit bone, pull back a quarter inch, then inject. And so, this concludes the tutorial. It's been my pleasure to share some of my knowledge on the subject. Comment below if you have any questions or if you want to share your experience with cerebral lysin or cortexin. Thank you.